and this is a concept that is fundamental to calculus. This is where Newton and Leibniz created calculus. This is the main idea as to what's happening. And we're going to think about some constant, some quantity, let's say, it could be a distance from a point with respect to time, if you will. Uh, it could be any other physical phenomenon that you would be thinking about that would be changing. Let's say x and y right now. So y is a function of x. Let's say y is f of x. And let's say we have two points of interest in our, in our function. Let's say we have an x1 here and an x2 here. And this x2 is going to be equal to x1 plus some quantity h. What would that quantity h represent? Would be just the distance between these two points. So the distance there would be your h, right? OK, so then we take a look at what happens when we evaluate the function at these two points. Well, at the first one, we get f of x1, right? We're evaluating x1, putting it in the function. That gives us the point where the vertical line intercepts, intersects the um, curve. Now here, I get my other point, let's say roughly here. Uh, unfortunately, that y is there, but that's going to be f of x2. All right. And now we can think about the line that goes through this point and through this point. So that is going to be called the secant line. And it would be between the two points. Let, oh, missing an e. Uh, between x1, comma f of 1 f of x1 and x2 comma f of x2. So that secant line would be what we, or the slope of that line would be what we call the average rate of change. So that would give us how much is the function changing in the y coordinate as we move from x1 to x2. And so let's write that slope. And normally the slope, we write it with m. And it will, it will denote it as m of secant line. And that's going to be f of x2 minus f of x1. So I'm subtracting the y coordinates. And I'm dividing by x2 minus x1. So that is the, that is the slope of the secant line right there. And it tells me, as I said, how much is the uh, function changing in the y coordinate as I change from x1 to x2 in the x coordinate. All right, but the main idea of calculus, so what makes the, all this work? Uh, or what makes calculus interesting or made it different to all the algebra and everything else that has been, had been done at the time was that both Leibniz and Newton independently thought, well, what happens whenever we let x2 become very, very small? So x2, sorry, the difference between x1 and x2 become really, really small if x2 tends towards x1. And the way that uh, they went about this was slightly different. Um, Newton had the idea of some ghost quantities, which would be our h. It's a little quantity. And then uh, Leibniz had the infinitesimals that he was working with. Um, so what we work nowadays is taking a limit. So, But let's see graphically what would happen if we start letting our uh, x2 get closer and closer to um, x1. And I'm going to erase this. I'm going to draw the graph again so that we can see it a little bit more, a little bit cleaner so we don't get all this mess in between. So I'm going to try to do it a little bit cleaner. Uh, so let's go ahead and erase. So drawing the graph again, so let's just say again we have our graph, something similar. And we had two quantities. 
And now I'm not going to annotate it so that it's not so cluttered. I'm going to fix this one, just call it X. And this is going to be my base point. And then I'm going to just pick one here. Not going to annotate, just going to draw the lines. So you see right here, secant line, eh, not that straight. But if I get closer, say here, let me draw that secant line with slightly different color. Let's see how we do. So let's go from here to here. So it will be kind of, I'm going to guess here. Ah, it's getting close. But now the main one is what if you make this H really, really small? So you go up to here, then you see this line is starting to get really, really close to the graph, but just touching it ever so slightly. What is going to happen when we let that H um, go down to zero, and I change colors there, what you're going to end up with is you're going to have your X here, and the line will no longer be secant. It will be tangent. So this is going to be called the tangent line. And let's try to compute with the idea that we have, what would the, what would the slope be? Well, remember we wrote the slope for the secant line as f of x1 or x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1. Well, what happens now if I let x2 be x plus h and x1 just be x the slope of the secant line becomes that right there so what can i do now to make that quantity h be really really small well we developed the mechanism for this in the previous lectures and we called it the limit and so here you're going to have that the derivative is defined as the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And that is going to be denoted by the function f primed evaluated at x. That's going to be the derivative. So it's going to be giving us an instantaneous rate of change. Not an average rate of change, but instantaneous rate of change. And that is the, the main idea of the derivative. So now, we're going to move on, move ahead and start solving uh, a few examples of, of how we compute the derivative by, this is going to be called, by the definition. So whenever you see in your problems, s compute the derivative by the definition, you want to uh, follow this procedure we're going to be doing.